Hi friends and welcome to another episode of Coach's Corner. Thanks for joining me again as you do uh, each week. I love getting your questions, I love getting to spend this time with you and I love supporting you in some of the things and challenges that you're facing. So today's question comes from Maureen and Maureen asks, how can you address conflict possibly befriend it as a natural growth opportunity rather than the impossible, scary place to avoid? Wow, huge question, huge answer. <laughs> it's thorny and prickly and difficult and something that all of us experience both in the professional place, workplace, as well as in our personal lives, I'm sure. Those of us who say we don't experience it, I'm sorry, you are living with your head in the sand because we all do to an extent or not, a certain extent or not. So when I read this question, I decided to look up what the definition of conflict is. And the Merriam-Webster dictionary defines it as war, fight, or battle. So it tells you right there that it is something that we do want to avoid. It's natural then that our bodies go crazy and nuts and are flooded with all sorts of endorphins that say, stop, no, don't proceed, don't go there. I think most of us would resonate with those feelings and statements in terms of dealing with something that is thorny, difficult, or conflict-ridden. So know that that is normal, first of all. It is normal for us to want to avoid these situations. It might not help us, and this is not the green light to always avoid them. I'm just saying it's normal to feel that way. It's also normal to expect that you will always feel that way. So getting rid of the feeling is of uncomfortableness is not what we're going for. What we're going for here in strategies to deal with those kinds of situations is the ability to move forward in spite of feeling that way. So that's sort of my first thing I think or I wanted to share around, around conflict. Um, the second th thing I wanted to share is I, I wanna encourage you to reframe it and to perhaps even use a different term Kim Scott wrote the book Radical Candor, and I really encourage anyone who's interested in learning more about this kind of stuff um, and engaging more with conflict in a constructive way to check that book out. I'm sure you can get it on Audible as well. And what she talks about in her book is um, caring personally while challenging directly. I'll say that again, caring personally while challenging directly. And so what this means for me is then I approach every conversation or every difficult situation. First of all, I take a breath because then that helps to stop those crazy flooding of hormones going through our body and it makes it helps us connect with ourself, get the thinking or the blood back to the thinking part of our brain and less to the emotional stuff that's happening inside of us. We listen. That's what we do when we're being kind and <laughs> we're caring personally. Um, and we talk about the issue and not the person. And that can be really, really difficult. We're often focused on all of the stuff around this, the, the conflict instead of going right into the issue itself. So what is the actual problem? So if you, in, prepar in preparation for a difficult conversation, perhaps, if that's what we're talking about, getting really clear on why is this an issue? What is the problem? What is the issue? Take the breath, listen, speak directly, and kindly and focus on the issue, not the person. So that's my general answer. I still hope there are some little tips and techniques that you can take away from that, as well as the reference to radical candor. The other piece that I wanna talk about a little bit more, the facilitator hat, the leadership consultant, can't help but go to these handy dandy tools that I love. If you want greater awareness in how you show up in these types of situations, because you're half of the, the the problem or the conversation if it's between two people, knowing what you're bringing to the conversation is extremely important because perhaps you're part of, or you will be part of the dance one way or another. This is a tool that gives some insight into how you deal with conflict. I wanted just to show you my scores on the five conflict handling modes. So for those who are totally geek out over this stuff, um, keep listening. <laughs> So there's five different styles according to this model. There are many different models. This is just the one I happen to like. Competing, collaborating, compromising, avoiding, and accommodating. 
What I learned here, and it totally made sense to me, is that I accommodate more than anything else. As a people pleaser, I accommodate in situations that both serve me and also that don't serve me. And so what this helped me do was understand and ask that question, in what situations have I compromised or have I accommodated to my detriment? And what do I need to do differently next time? And so then what I need to do differently next time is what I was talking about a minute ago. I take the deep breath, I prepare for the difficult conversation, I listen with kindness, and I talk about the issue and not the person. I hope this stuff helps. If you want more info about this, if you want some help going through the tool um, as well, I'd be happy to help. Just give me a shout. Let me know what you think of the video and I'll see you next week on Coach's Corner. Don't forget to submit your questions too. Have an awesome week. See you next week. Bye.